Well, I, le I left school a fortnight before I was 14. And then I just went to a, what they call service, where you lived in and waited. It was, five, it was a notable family, five old people. Miss Maud, Miss Blanche, Miss Gertrude, Miss Edith, Miss Evelyn, and the Major. And he was a Lady Smith, so you know where old he was. <laughs> they were all over 70. And I was like, gosh, I just never stick it. But then I didn't want to stay, obviously, yet. No, well, I was thinking about when I, ever am I going to get a chance to go to pitch it. Yes. <laughs> because, but then I, when I went there, to the factory, there, I, I went up and I saw Mr. Sotel, the manager, and um, got talking to him. I rang his thought, you know, I know I went with a berry and all on. I thought I was the cat's whiskers. Um, and he said, well, if you like to come on Monday, he said, I think we could find your job. I thought, oh, gosh, I don't know hardly how to find a needle little. But when I got there, I went in the workroom <clears throat> and the forewoman there says, well, I'm sorry, my dear, but we, you know, we're fully staffed. So that meant I had to go into one of the other room, finishing rooms. <coughs> Excuse me. And then eventually I went in a couple of rooms and then they put me in charge of the dispatch department. Know where I well made out the invoices and made sure everything was okay and all the boxes were labelled and then it went down to another department where it was finished off and cartoned up and away to go. What struck me was it was so loud when I went in there because I guess I was well you imagine you know very very and I was quiet and I was oh my gosh and when I got that generator and all going. All, all worked, you know, pulling things, and I mean, all the cutting wasn't done by electric. They had sort of iron bars, of course, and a great iron ball on the end, and they placed the material and the knives and that on the front, and they cut and swig it around like that, and it would go down. They would cut out clean the whistle, but oh, I thought, gosh, I should never. But then I wasn't in the cutting shop, it was only just as I went through and that. Oh, God, well, they lovely sing songs, you know. I know there's a, an old-fashioned hymn called Bringing in the Sheaves. They sang it at the Bethel Chapel. <laughs> They'd be there singing Bringing the Machines instead of the Sheaves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they had lovely, you know. But they had to keep their heads down and work because they only got paid for what they did. We had lovely Christmas parties there. We got one with I used to have a party at... I used to have a well, little get together in the room that I was in charge of, you know, and I only had two records Rock Around the Clock and See You Later, Alligator. But we'd have 30, 40 couples dancing to that. They were having a whale of a time, no drink, you know, unless you sneaked in. The, I used to make a little bit of a punch, but just glorified cider. <laughs> but no, like I said, everybody cared. In their days, there's no care in today, apart from your own family. I don't know the names of anybody in the street. Whereas at one time you knew everyone, you knew their family, you knew where they worked, almost knew if they'd got anything in the bank. <laughs> that was nothing. And I've never been in any of the little cottages that's built in there. I couldn't believe they could get that many cottages in there.